What is going on, Internet? My name's James Cooper, and you're watching Relative Motion. And this is the channel all about teaching you the best means to get you wherever you need to go. So continuing in the spirit that the Northern Hemisphere is going into summer, I think it's a great time to keep talking about personal submarines. And this season, more specifically, Season 4, we're looking at the best hydrobatic and sports submarines on the market. And in this episode, episode two, we're taking a look at the Deep Flight Super Falcon, which to me is the equivalent of an underwater fighter jet. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why. Deep Flight Super Falcon is one of the most popular personal submarines on the market today. And to me, really brought the idea of having a personal submarine, especially on a private yacht, to the light. This submarine was Deep Flight's first submarine and was introduced in 2009. It was created by Graham Hawks. Now, in the game of personal submarines, it's not a huge market obviously, but I would definitely say Deep Flight and Triton, who's a company we'll talk about later, pretty much dominate the industry. Although I think there are some other companies that are starting to get into it pretty effectively, and we'll definitely cover all of this in this season here on Relative Motion. But back to the Super Flight, part of the reason this sub really helped bring personal subs to more popularity is one of the people who purchased one of these is the Red Bull owner, and actually has a resort where he lets some people pilot it around. And then on top of it, GoPro has also made a lot of videos about this submarine. Because of GoPro's big presence, that has really helped boost the submarine's popularity. And what I really think helped skyrocket this particular submarine and them being so well known is the fact I think a lot of people think it looks so cool. And really has a look, like I've mentioned, of a fighter jet. And realistically, I'd say it really handles like one too. Now this is due to the fact, like in the last video on this season, how I mentioned all deep flight submarines are always net positive buoyant. So if the submarine is left alone, it'll always rise to the surface, which is a good safety feature. However, you basically now have to keep the submarine always moving to keep it where you want and to keep it from surfacing slowly. But I think that's perfectly fine in this submarine, since to me, this submarine is really only for having fun because it always has to keep moving, like I've explained. Now, if you're having fun in this, I don't think that's necessarily a downside. I think it really just makes the submarine really fun to control, because you basically feel like you're in an airplane. Important to be aware of the fact that this thing always has to keep moving, because like I said, this can become hard to control if you stop, because now, the only way you can go is forward with the one thruster, where most submarines have multiple thrusters, allowing it, even when it's standing still, to go in multiple directions for good underwater agility. So I'd definitely be careful how close you're getting to stuff in this, because if you're not watching what you're doing, you can run into stuff pretty easily. And that's mostly because this is a sports submarine and meant to go fast and have fun through the water. Where I'd say in other seasons where we'll cover other submarines, those are made more for exploring and scientific research, where you might be standing still a lot more. However, don't let this thing fool you having only one thruster. It still can go in about any direction you can imagine and do maneuvers that you couldn't probably do in most submarines. For example, it can go completely inverted when surfacing or diving for maximum vertical speed. It can also do barrel rolls, loops, rolls, and all sorts of other maneuvers that, like I said, you might expect to only be capable of doing in a jet. So, the large reason this handles, just like an airplane or a jet, is it has almost identical controls. I mean, actually, they kind of are identical because this has little stub wings with controls off the side, and then in the back, have a horizontal stabilizer, just like an airplane, again with controls off the back, and then on top of it, it also has a rudder, just like an airplane. However, I'm gonna avoid calling these the airplane terms, because of course in submarines, they gotta be called something else. So in the world of submarines, these are called bow planes, and they're used to control the submarine underwater when it's going forward, and these are typically only found on submarines that are limited to one or two thrusters that just move it forward. But I would say this is actually the most common design for submarines. And all of these submarines' older brothers that belong to militaries around the world, for the most part, all of these large military submarines are designed in this fashion, where they have forward and aft diving planes, otherwise called bow and stern in boats. 
However, the one difference is, like I've already mentioned, the sub is always positively buoyant. Where of course, larger submarines have ballast tanks, which is a large help for controlling being underwater. But with the use of this submarine, I really don't think it's an issue on this one. And like of course with everything, there's benefits to not having this ballast system on board. Mostly from a safety aspect that you can never really sink. I think it's worth being aware that this submarine, for the most part, has to continuously run its engine. Which of course leads to killing the battery fairly quickly. However, if you are just using this submarine, potentially, to go somewhere, because the submarine is so streamlined, just like a fighter jet, it's actually really efficient and has the longest range of any submarine on this list and competes very highly with all personal submarines with the fact this submarine can go really far. And it's also, of course, pretty fast. To be honest, though, I'm not quite sure what this range actually is because I can't find any information on how large the motor actually is on this specific submarine. And because of that, it's a lot harder to estimate the range. Although I will say, of pretty much any submarine, this maybe has the coolest impeller on the back, which almost looks like a jet engine. Can you say fighter jet? Being that the submarine does have such an incredible range and speed, I think it's unfortunate that it'd be hard to use this submarine for one of my favorite personal uses, which is not too common of submarines, but using them just to travel around in, because I just think submarines are so cool. Now, generally speaking, submarines don't make the best tenders, but I don't think you can beat the swag of arriving anywhere in a submarine. Now, going with my theory, I think this had the potential of being one of the coolest submarine tenders. But, because this is positively buoyant, realistically, when you go to launch this thing, you have to put both people inside it and close the hatches before it's put in the water. Because it sits so low in the water, because it doesn't want to be too positively buoyant, so it has to fight against too much force wanting to push it up. So best I can tell, if you open either hatch while it's actually in the water, you're going to sink because it's going to flood the compartment. However, if you do have to get out of this, Deep Flight does include emergency pop-out floats on all their submarines, which as far as I can tell can actually even be used underwater to some depth. And is a great way to surface in an emergency. However, my thought here is, once surfaced, with the submarine being much more buoyant, it pulls the submarine a lot more out of the water, so you can open the hatches without letting water in and almost turns the submarine into a sort of life draft. Now my thinking here potentially is if you were really determined to use this as a tender, like I'd be obsessed with doing if I actually owned one of these things. When they decide to launch in your submarine to your destination on shore, in your multi-million dollar yacht, they can load you in this, put you in the water from a crane, and then you can go to your destination underwater in complete peace and harmony. And then when you arrive, you can pull the emergency floats to allow the submarine to come much more out of the water, allowing you to get out of it. And then, when you go back, you'd of course have to remain on the surface with the floats out. So maybe you're going to be a lot less stylish when you leave. But, once you get back to your yacht, they can pull you out of the water with the crane. And then, as long as these emergency floats are just repackable, you can have one of your crew members, which I'm sure you have, at this point, repack the floats back into the submarine. Or I guess if you have a little more sanity, you could just get in a regular tender and go to shore. But, I will say, I think these are great, really bad weather tenders for the fact you can go under all the bad weather once they launch you to hopefully whatever bay that you're trying to get to. And once you're inside the bay, the whole point of a bay is the weather's much more calm. So you could come to the surface then, versus being rocked all over the place trying to get there on the surface in just a regular boat. But I'm always trying to justify my crazy ideas, because that is the major problem with this submarine is you can only get out of it once it's completely out of the water. So either you gotta get pulled up on a trailer, by a crane, or you could even use some sort of dry dock elevator to pull you out, which I have seen before. However, this style of dock elevator is rare, so don't be expecting to find one at your final destination anytime soon to help you get out of the water. But if you can figure out a way to use this as a tender, I can't think of a more fun way to go to shore. And just as a last note, I really wouldn't be beaching this on anything except complete sand, and even that I would be careful about. So if that's your plan on getting out of this thing wherever you land, I really would advise not counting on that so you don't damage your submarine. But like I said, if you're really careful with it, I think it could be done. You just gotta be extremely careful beaching something like this, especially for its price tag. And I wouldn't be beaching this because, just like all the deep flight submarines, it has a composite pressure vessel which helps contain the difference in pressure 
between the inside of the submarine and the pressure of the water you're in. And it's very unique to submarines. Most submarines have a steel hull. Because it is composite, I think you could damage it pretty easily trying to beach it. However, because they went composite, they were able to make this thing look so sleek and hydrodynamic, which really helps lead to the speed and efficiency of this gliding through the water. It appears best to my knowledge, just like the Deep Flight Dragon, this is actually pilotable from both seats, which is a great feature on something like this, since it is just for fun. It allows both passengers to have as much fun as possible in this machine. And I believe both seats have good harnesses on them, which allows you to go inverted and do barrel rolls and all the crazy maneuvers that you can do in this, and helps keep you from falling on your face. Even though the submarine only has one thruster for going forward, because it can go inverted, it actually has a pretty good vertical rate of climb. Because when you just point it straight up, all the energy is being put in that direction. Instead of when it's going forward, it can only use the bow planes to push it towards the surface, which is going to be much slower. Now, just like the Deep Flight Dragon we just talked about in the last episode, these are both trailerable behind anything that can tow it. And even though this one's fairly wide with the wings that hang off the side, they thought of this and made it so those wings could actually fold to make this much more narrow and being the proper trailer dimensions and not being an oversized load. Which I think was a great idea on this particular submarine. Since you don't actually have to have a yacht to have one of these and have a ton of fun. Since you could easily charge it at your house. And if you can afford a 1.5 million dollar submarine, this will probably fit in your garage. I think the last potential con to maybe just be aware of in your head with this submarine is that because it only has one thruster, which is pretty rare on these small personal submarines, it does add a little less reliability to it from the fact is in this submarine it's a little bit easier to get stranded if that motor does quit because you don't have any other motors to help get you back to wherever you need to go. So in a weird way, if you could actually fit a paddle in here, it might not be the worst idea. But anytime you're in a submarine, you should be taking things pretty seriously as far as your exit strategy goes if something goes wrong. Because one of my favorite sayings with submarines is, there's room for anything on a submarine, except for a mistake. And with that really deep insight there, I'm going to wrap up this video on the Deep Flight Super Falcon, which really is an awesome machine. And if you couldn't tell how much I really like it, it's actually in the intro of Relative Motion. So it definitely gets the Relative Motion seal of approval. Of course, as always, I'm going to quickly flash through any statistics on this submarine and feel free of course to pause the video at any moment to read more on those stats if you want to know more. And in the next episode on this season we're going to be taking a look at a different manufacturer's submarine now and the company that makes this submarine is called U-Boat Works which is a pretty cool submarine company name I have to say. And this submarine that they make is called the Hypersub. And it's actually the fastest personal submarine that you can buy. Yep, you heard me right. This thing's a speed machine. And of course, if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to click the subscribe button below so you won't miss any of the awesome vehicles we feature here on Relative Motion. I appreciate you checking out this video. And until next time, my name's James Cooper, and you've been watching Relative Motion.